Welcome to another episode of Epic Guns. Today, we're going to be looking at the 1911 platform, the longest serving sidearm in American military history. But instead of doing it in 45, today we're going to do it in 9 millimeter. We are keeping up with the times, That's aren't right. we? It's a great platform in 45. But what man, it really shoots nice with a 9 millimeter. So we've got a whole bunch of different representatives here. We've got Colt, Springfield, Kimber, Rock Island, and a few extras just because we don't want to get bored. And we're going to see which one is the most epic gun. Okay, first up is the Colt 1911 9mm competition. We're going to go at 21 feet on steel targets with six rounds and see how she works. Now remember, folks, I'm ice cold, so if it misses, it's me. One of the oldest names in American shooting is Springfield Armory, and here is a Springfield Armory 1911. It's got nice sights, got nice wooden grips, and this one also is a 9mm. Let's see how it shoots compared to the Colt. I was worried about the sights against the black target. Apparently this one does not wish to shoot black targets. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a classic stovepipe. So as we are judging these handguns one against the other, three jams and six shots, so far we are not atop the leaderboard here with the Springfield Armory. Finicky on ammo. Okay, next up is the Kimber Stainless II. Now this is my own personal and this coming into this competition is my favorite. We'll see how she works. Six for six, we're in the win column here. Please note the gun did not lock open on the last shot though, so we'll see what's up with that. Hey, this one we're gonna have a little bit of fun with. This is a Philippine-made Rock Island Armory 1911 in nine millimeter. Um, this is by far the least expensive of all these firearms, which amuses me to no end. Also, when one considers that the um, original design brief for the 1911 came from the Moro Rebellion, circa 1902 to 1913, that's what created the 1911. So let's see how they are doing at keeping up with the times building a modern nine millimeter. Here we have the Rock Island Armory in 9mm. Let's give this one a try. No muss, no fuss, all solid gold. Ready? Didn't, didn't jam. Okay, so we're going to go with same four guns, smaller targets, same distance. See how she goes. <laughs> Springfield, twenty one feet, smaller target. Ah, that wasn't a live one. The Springfield gave both Jeff and I a little trouble the first time around, and Jeff a little trouble the second time around. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. You're giving it a little bit of a clean and a lube. Yay! I think it might be starting to break in. Okay, 
The Kimber stainless steel, 21 feet, smaller target. That's better. I'm not disliking this. Okay, here's our dark horse in the race. This is the Rock Island Armory 1911. It's a double wide, but it is a 1911 made in the Philippines. Let's see how this one runs. So far, 100% reliability. Four guns, four group, 21 feet. Uh, that's a bummer. Okay, that's that one. Yeah. Okay, Colt, Springfield, Kimber, Rock Island. That, honestly, it's a pretty close tie between these two. And yes, I'm aware I milk my targets a little bit. Okay, in fairness to both Jeff and myself, we're putting a little bit of a giddy up on shooting these um, on shooting these groups because we're both competition shooters. That said, that's a nice group with one little flyer there. It's nice to see the target center punched. This is the Colt. Over here is the Springfield. Springfield. A little bit of string, and that could be me. That could be the magazine. That could be me. Um, again, nice central like grouping, so we're shooting pretty well over here. I can't help but notice that. Uh, Real nice group here, but then a couple of flyers. I'm not sure what the heck is going on here, but uh, ah, grip. that's my worst group, and I like the grip the most. Yeah. And then over here, probably my best group here in terms of consistency. And again, that's the frickin' Rock Island Armory. Okay, so we are competitive shooters, so we got to compete a little tiny bit. We, now, we, we picked our favorite guns. He is the most beautiful of us, so he picked the most beautiful <laughs> firearm. I probably the, picked the ugliest of the firearms. I'll just. Let I you... went with a Colt. He went with a Rock Island. We're gonna shoot on the tree and see what happens. Man. <laughs> I'm not a lot to shoot at there, is there? <laughs> I'm not sure what we established. That wasn't very fair. I think I knocked over three with one shot. We'll call that a draw. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, a final synopsis of the 1911s in 9mm. Mark, what did you think? Let's give it a breakdown here. Um, well, let's go through them one at a time. Prettiest one, hands down, Colt. Absolutely. Yep, that's got showroom appeal for days, yep. and I really like that fiber optic front it's sight. It's hard to miss. Boy, I'll tell you what. Um, uh, for precision shooting, it's a little bit of a problem, but if you're trying to get a, a, a round on target, that's the winner. But yep. you had a jam with it. I did have a jam with it. Okay. Right in the middle of our competition. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> well, and that's the last time he lets me load his magazine. <laughs> knocking three targets over with one shot wasn't bad for me. So I go that, that did make up for it. Um, um, this, I wanted to like the most, and I got to be honest, I like it second most. Yeah, okay. okay. Springfield Armory, what did you think? Man, you know what? It's a little bulkier than both the Kimber and the Colt. Uh, it had some issues. It's a little bit rough. Uh, this is a pretty new gun. I don't think I have a hundred rounds to it before we got it out here, and it still needs some break-in time. So I'm not all that happy with it. How about you? Um, I I really wanted to like the precision target sights, but you yeah. and I have been competing for so long. Mm. We're rather more used to snap shooting. For snap shooting, mm -hmm. these kind of did better. If you're a paper puncher or a Camp Perry shooter, you might yeah. have a different experience. But yeah, it had my least favorite sights. Mm -hmm. I like the ambidextrous safety. As you said, it's a little more bulky. Um, in the aggregate, I don't know what it was, but this one came in last place. It's not a bad pistol, but we had multiple jams with it even after yeah. we cleaned and oiled it. So, uh, love you, Springfield Armory, but this one needs some break-in time. Yeah, that would be a two thumbs down. The Kimber. Okay, hard to go wrong with a Kimber. First off, it's got the night sights on it. Even though they're night sights, are really easy to see out here in the daytime. It's got the real streamline uh, grip. Man, it, and it's a shooter, and I've shot this one many times. Uh, hard to go wrong with it. Um, I really, really like the slender grips. I, by the way, did you notice they all had flat mainspring housings, not yeah. an arch mainspring housing, so that apparently is the new norm. Anyway, I really like the slender grips. I do like the striations on the front of the slide because I'm a combat loader, that right. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the sights, the night sights, as you said, were really, really good for picking up against any of the various kinds of yep. targets that we had. Um, had a couple of little uh, technical problems with the jams. It seemed to run pretty well after we gave it another thorough cleaning and oiling. Um, uh, third favorite, close behind the Colt. Yeah, okay, I'd go with that. And then your gun, the Rock Island. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the double stacker. Uh, I hated the front sight because it's kind of an off yellow yep. and a little hard to pick up, especially on the black sights. But you know, for both of us, it really... Uh, you shot the best group of the day with yeah, it grouped, both of us both. It grouped real well. How many jams? Uh, oh, that would be zero. Zip, zero, <laughs> Zelchnado. Listen, one of the reasons you like the 1911 is because it's such a time-tested, mm -hmm. trouble-free platform. Again, the uh, in the 1910 tests where they fired 6,000 rounds, just dunking it in a bucket to cool it off, and yeah. it went without a problem. Well, and one other thing to keep in mind, when you know a gun is going to work, as opposed to one that may or may not work, you're thinking constantly... And when you're shooting and thinking, if you're thinking about anything other yeah. than the sights, you're thinking about the wrong thing. That's yeah. a real good point. Yeah. So um, I, I hate it. This is not, <laughs> this is the ugly duckling. duckling $2,000, uh, you may have a different I still experience. am picking a cult. I'm sorry. It's a cult. <laughs> but man, for, for... It's tough to argue with the results. For huh? practical purposes, it's really hard to it's really hard to go against the good old Rock Island. Okay, so that does it for 1911s in 9mm. I'm Jeff, the gunslinger, owner of Gunslinger's Gun Shop and Gunslinger Auction. I'm Mark, the professor. Um, we host a radio show on KABC 790 Los Angeles called... The Gunslinger Hour... That's KABC 797 AM Sunday morning. We're also available on Facebook Live. You can listen to our podcast. You can check out our Facebook Live. Whatever you do, come back for another episode of Epic Guns. Guns.